usually, you know, in air fair, you, are, you want to sell stuff that are good for everybody, and also you use like colors and nice uh, images, you know. I want really to do, to try, you know, to make like a shock. That's right. what I try to do. Uh, that's exactly what happened to me when I was walking over by this wall. That's great. We're here on Miami Beach outside of the Pulse Contemporary Art Fair. Pulse, which exists in these two giant pavilions, um, sets itself up every year and brings around 75 major galleries and dealers from all over the world. And in fact, many of the artists who have their work in Pulse are at this fair, so you can really get up close and personal with the art and the people that make it. I think it's really important to support, promote, and provide a platform for younger artists because they're the next generation and they have, you know, they have a lot to say. There's some confrontational works, you know, and there's some, some definitely some strong voices coming through and then at the same time there's just some really like wonderful pieces that take you to another dimension and that's cool too, you know, we want to have all of that here. Uh, paying homage to queer black youth in general, as well as many victims of police brutality. That's why I made some objects dedicating them to those people. Uh, the swings, they're all a part of a series called For Tamir, for Tamir Rice, um, who was shot and died the next day, a uh, 12 year old on a swing set. Most of the paintings are using my own body, um, sort of as a surrogate. I, I sort of assume the role of this shaman that's bringing these stories in, in, into light and. Um, sharing these stories and, you know, I make these paintings for a younger version of me, possibly. We are with artist Tony Gum. What's up? Maybe one of the youngest artists exhibiting at the fair. You're only how old? 21. 21 years old. Now, how long have you been making art? I think I've been doing art for majority of my life. This new body of work speaks on my heritage, my identity, and my culture. So I explore three different types of women. There's the girl, Indombi, the wife, Mfazi, and Ikleko, the grandmother. I still don't have a title for the work. Really? I don't feel pressured anymore to have a title because I believe that this in work and in, when it comes to art, true, authentic art, it's ever evolving. It shouldn't be rushed to be showcased at art fairs. No, that's not the case. Right. For me, it's a personal experience. I been painting most of my life, but uh, never saw it as something that would be sellable. You know, that was before social media became a big part of the art market, and when that came into play, it, it really allowed me to connect with this unique group of people who would appreciate my work in small pockets all over the world. Well, right now we're standing in front of what I would probably say is the most Instagram piece that I've seen so far. People are ready to um, deal with some darker imagery to do that kind of introspective work and that's definitely what my work's about. How do you describe your style of painting? Conceptually I think it's using the grotesque dynamic, playing with this tension between attraction and repulsion, beauty and horror, anything where great contrast exists. I like those polarities. Mm -hmm. It encourages people to come closer and then you're confronted with something that's abject and you're forced to reconcile those two impulses of curiosity and, and repulsion. My piece is called Military Cut and it was shot uh, near Marfa, which is a small town in West Texas, about 45 minutes from the border with Mexico. And this piece um, happened because I was getting more and more obsessed with the border and what that meant and people's relationship to the other and the alien. So in the film there is a uh, barber and a soldier, a real soldier, having his hair cut um, in the middle of the desert and that's all it is, just shot from various different angles. When somebody in the military joins they have to have all their hair removed and so there's a, a sense of someone being controlled. When you were making the piece did you expect that it would have such significance given the current political climate? With most of my work, I'm hoping that the issues that I'm discussing will be resolved and will not be such a problem in the future. So the idea that this work actually is becoming more of an issue is a shame. I 
started making collage in like 2005. I was really interested in heraldry as a design formula. You know, essentially it's a collage of images that represent rank, position, power, wealth, status, beauty, but then also generational wealth, you know? And so I wanted to create images that communicate that today, but using contemporary material. And so this body of work, I was really thinking a lot about the role that women play in the work, because I'm dealing with, you know, consumer images. And a lot of the work is often inspired by a lot of my performance work that I do with Vogue performers, yep. a lot of which are trans women. But then there's also, I'm from New Orleans, and so they're all murdered out in like black candy paint and have the leather too. And so that's a little bit of my personal history coming into the conversation as well. Yeah, I, I so it's very it's, layered. There's so much to <laughs> learn about. And that's a wrap. We've spent the past two days at the Pulse Contemporary Art Fair in Miami. Not only are my eyeballs tired, but my soul is exhausted from all of the incredible things that the works imparted on me. I think it's a good time to either go to the beach, have a drink, or both.